Hey, Psych 100 students. Hopefully you have um, turned in chapters 6, 7, and 8. You have turned in your relate papers by now, your extra credits. You have already completed exam 2, which uh, was broadcast on March 26, uh, and you had until April 3rd to complete the answers and resubmit them. And now you're starting off fresh with chapter 9. Now I'm hoping that these lectures will not be the only lectures we'll need. Hopefully we'll be back live soon and uh, we may switch back to our original format to exams with multiple choice items and uh, short answer essays. If not, I'm anticipating in case we don't come back, I'm going to go ahead and try to do all the lectures from chapters 9 through the end of our textbook so that uh, you'll have all the lectures available in case we don't come back live. I hope that's not the case. I really hope that we do come back live. So, um, here we go. Chapter 9. By the way, this is take 2. I had this filmed already and I hit the wrong button and it deleted it and I can't find out how to get it back. So, here's the second version. Hopefully it's better than the first version. This is chapter 9, Lifespan Development. And um, I wonder how you felt about this chapter. I can tell you that it's the story of my life. I like this chapter. Matter of fact, I like this chapter so much I've given it a nickname. I've called it Womb to Tomb, right? From the very beginning of our time to the end of time. We've actually experienced a lot of this chapter. We've lived through it. We don't remember all of it. We're living through it or we've yet to experience it. And here's a couple cartoon renditions of this chapter. This guy is collecting for money and he is hyperactive. He probably has been for quite some time, right? And here we have a couple of fellows comparing their past. You know how our past interferes with our future sometimes. The boy brought up by wolves meets the boy brought up by raccoons. Let me loosen a chicken coo and there's no telling what will happen. That's the way I feel about garbage cans late at night. So this notion that things that happen to you really can affect your development. And we'll talk about that when we get to our case study, which is called Toy Story. No, not Woody and company, but a different Toy Story. Here's the process of development all the way from prenatal through late adulthood. And one of my favorite movies uh, involved to this, these stages is a movie called Big, B-I-G, starring Tom Hanks. And it's about, about a young boy who really would rather be older, he'd rather be bigger. And so he goes to a carnival and makes a wish on a Zoltar machine and the next morning he's grown up. And so he has to live in a grown-up world. And that has his challenges because he hasn't had the chance to develop to that level. And then the rest of the movie, he tries to get back as a kid. And I highly advise this film if you get a chance to watch something since we have more time at home these days. Talking about objects, let's talk about Toy Story. Here's some objects from the 80s. Some of these items you might recognize. Everything from He-Man to Care Bears to um, Cabbage Patch dolls. What's an object or toy that was significant to you? Do you still have it? Now, for myself, my particular case study of Toy Story is a toy that I still have. Now, I had a lot of toys growing up. Most of them were used secondhand, but that's okay because we still had fun with them. Once you play with something, it becomes immediately secondhand, whether it's new or old, right? This is the toy that when I was a kid, my father brought home to us. It's a toy car, tin car. It's considered a Japanese tin car made by the Ichiko Company in Japan. It's a 1964 Thunderbird. That's a T-Bird made by Ford Motor Company. It's about 14 inches long, maybe about four inches high. It's made out of metal. It's got real rubber tires. On the back of the vehicle, there's a couple knobs that you turn. One knob that you turn raises the windows on both sides up and down, which is pretty cool. The other knob that you turn actually has the roof collapse into the trunk and voila it becomes a convertible i just thought this car was the coolest ever this is the actual photograph of the car i have at home now as soon as i got my car when my dad brought them home new from sears in the box 
I took it out and started playing with it. One of my brothers, who also got the exact same car, went and put his away. And he came back and said, let's play with your car. He was very smart. He was older than I was. And he later became an antique dealer. Go figure, right? Now, we were used to our father bringing up secondhand toys. He'd stop after work, maybe pick up a few things at the Salvation Army or someplace like that, and then bring it home to us. We didn't care. They were used, but they were new to us. On this occasion, he brought these new cars, and we couldn't figure it out. It wasn't our birthday, it wasn't a holiday, we weren't particularly good that day, but we didn't care. We just played with them. Now, over the years, this car came with me. It followed me. It, despite the fact that I moved so many places, it was never lost or stolen or never sold or given away like a lot of my stuff was over the years. Just recently, I started contemplating what possessed my father to give us those new cars in the box from Sears. I pondered about it for quite some time before I kind of figured out the solution. I mean, my father had his family in Texas. He came to Detroit to work in the factories. And one of the first factories he worked for, from a Ford Motor Company, was a factory by the name of River Rouge. This factory was so huge that it became its own city, River Rouge, Michigan. I'm telling you, this factory had its own police department, its own fire department. They built the car from the very beginning to the very end, the entire car in the same factory. As a matter of fact, when Diego Rivera came to Detroit to paint a mural for the Detroit Institute of Arts, he visited this factory to sketch machines and people so he can get a better sense of the mechanization of the world at the time. He actually features real people in his mural. So if you ever stop in Detroit, stop at the Detroit Institute of Arts and take a peek at his mural. It's amazing. So I put two and two together. I figured out that my dad, while working at River Rouge, probably put together this car. 1964 Ford Thunderbird. He helped make the real car. And I'm sure he was walking in Sears and saw that vehicle that he helped put together in real life and said, hmm, I'd like to get that as a memento for my sons. So he did. Guess what? Um, he's long gone, so I can't ask him if that was the real reason. But it means something to me. It's one of the few things that I have that my father actually gave me, a physical thing, not a psychological thing or emotional thing, but a physical thing that he actually gave to me. So I've saved it and I've cherished it over these years. Can't wait to hear about your toy story once we see each other in person sometime in the future. Now, I have this rule about insects. Insects are cool. They serve a purpose, right? They're food for other animals. They um, mix the ground up. They do a variety of different things. Some are nice things, some are not so nice things. If they're outside, that's their domain. I don't worry about it. I figure it's their nature. They were here before us probably, so be it. But if they come in the house, I have to draw the line. And I tell them, bugs, please leave. I give them fair warning. I give them time to leave. Sometimes I open the window or the door and a lot of times they just look at me and say, talk to the antennae, right? So if they refuse to leave, I bust out the Windex. If they're on the window, I give them a squirt. They drop. Also, I get a chance to clean the window. Dual purpose. Now, over the years, I thought about, wow, this Windex, it doesn't say bug killer on the label of Windex. It says, you know, clean your mirrors or your windows and so forth. Why is it so efficient? It's so efficient because it's a teratogen. These are environmental agents that can really cause us harm, especially if we're in the womb. And you can see that a lot of things we have no control over. They're just in our environment, like pollutants. So be careful if there's a developing person 
or even for yourself, a lot of Teratogens are outside, but some of them are on, in our kitchen sink. So be careful, because I figure if it kills the insect that efficiently, what is it doing to me, right? Now the next couple slides I'm going to show is dealing with sexual issues. So if you have kids around, you might want to ask them to leave the room. Because I'm going to show a picture dealing with sex, and I don't want to shock anybody. So for those who are shocked by such things, cover your ears, cover your eyes. Come back after a couple minutes. Here is the ovum surrounded by viable sperm, and this is the process of fertilization. Now, my spidey senses, incredible disappointment from some of you. I won't name who. You were expecting something more interesting. As we develop in the womb, some of you over the years had nicknames. My nickname was Jeep, and it took me forever to figure out why did my father call me Jeep. Guess what? My initials are JP. Man, I tend to just be a little slow on things. Here's some photos I downloaded of you. This picture here, you were called the Blob. In this picture, you were called Shrimp. This picture, you obviously had too much hot sauce in the womb. This is the picture where you had a bad burrito. Here's the magic umbilical cord, the magic cord that kept you alive, right? Food coming in, waste going out, life was good. You didn't worry about accessories, anything. Here you are looking pretty much the way you look now, except for you have a lot more hair and you have clothes on. And um, guess what? We had to come out into this cruel world of chapter notes, relay paper, extra credit, uh, COVID-19, you know, a variety of nonsense we have to deal with. Our development has been a process. And here's a look at our development. Everything from our fetal position, which was our favorite position when we were born. Why? We spent a lot of time in that position. It's a great position to be in if you want to preserve warmth. Matter of fact, some of you are in this position right now and not watching this video. By one month, we can hold that enormous head, a compliment of yours. By two months, you can hold up more of your body. By four months, you could sit with little help from your friends. By seven months, you're sitting all oh, independent. Look at that. Look at the attitude of that kid, right? He's got an attitude like, I still crap my pants, but I sit by myself. By nine months, we're starting to make our way around the world. Joseph's tip for the day, if you have any little ones around, get them those little rubber ends you can put on these tables because that way they won't hurt themselves. By seven months, I'm, I'm sorry, by 10 months, you're starting to crawl into the world. By 11 months, you're getting around with a little help from your friends. By 14 months, notice that kid, that's why they call them toddlers. They toddle back and forth. It looks like Frankincense Monster. And by 15 months, we're making our way around the world safely. Now, I used to do a parenting class, and I told my parents, before your parents start to walk or crawl, you crawl around the apartment or the home that you live in so you can be the baby. You can see what angle they're at. Because let's face it, their world down there is a lot different from our world up here. And there's all kinds of things that we may not anticipate. Electrical cords, electrical outlets, whatever. Uh, that they're going to see and they're not going to see. Now, did you develop normally? Well, your doctor asked your mom and dad if you met these milestones at certain ages. Some kids are a little bit faster or slower. Some are, you are early walkers. Some are late walkers. We're going to explore this world of development next time and see where you're at in your development. I appreciate your patience with this process. Thank you.